In the previous lesson, we had an overview of the executor's framework. In this lesson, we will discuss about the most important interfaces and classes that we come across frequently while using the executor's framework. The first one is the executor, which is the main interface in this framework. Its main purpose is to decouple the task submission step from thread creation and running steps. It has a method void execute that takes a runnable as a parameter. Executor service is the second most important interface in this framework and it extends the executor interface. It provides a life cycle to the executors. The life cycle has three phases, the initialization phase, the service phase, and the destruction phase. In the initialization phase, it creates the required number of threads and starts them to if required. This phase is usually hidden and you can just customize it by providing it some parameters through executors class that actually bootstraps the service. In the service phase, it provides its services by running the submitted tasks. And lastly, in the destruction phase, it shuts down and stops accepting new tasks for running. The box on the right shows some of the methods provided by the executor service interface. The top two methods named submit are the service methods. These two overloaded methods accept a callable and a runnable respectively and run them. We already know about the runnables. For Java newbies, we create a task by implementing the callable interface when we want that task to return a value. A runnable, on the other hand, does not return any value. Also note that as the executor service extends the executor interface, the execute method is also available for use here. Now, the last three methods shown here cater to the destruction phase of the executor service. With the shutdown method, you can instruct the service to shut itself down. After this method is called, no new task can be submitted to the service for running. Whatever tasks are currently being executed by the service will keep running till completed and whatever tasks are pending to be executed will also still be executed. Only new tasks will not be accepted. If you try to submit a new task to the service after shutting it down, you will get an exception. The shutdown now method, on the other hand, is a little unforgiving. It attempts to stop all the actively executing tasks and also halts the processing of all waiting tasks. It also returns the list of pending tasks that had not yet been run. You can check whether the executor service has indeed shut down or not by calling the isShutdown method on it. The next entity in this slide is the executors class. It is a factory class with static methods that constructs and returns various kinds of instances of the executor service with commonly useful configuration settings. As is clear from the methods shown on the right, the returned executor service instance can act as a fixed thread pool or a cached thread pool or even as a single thread executor. For creating an executor service backed by a fixed thread pool, you call the new fixed thread pool method. It takes an integer parameter named nthreads that specifies the number of threads that you want in the pool. This means that at any time, at most n threads number of tasks can ex execute concurrently. To create an executor service backed by a cached thread pool, use the new cached thread pool method. This kind of executor service continues creating threads as long as there are still some tasks awaiting execution and no thread is currently free to execute them. Once a thread is done executing a task, it is reused. If any thread is free when submitting a task, then that thread is reused instead of creating a new one. After the cached thread pool, let us now discuss about the single thread executor. Sometimes you need a background thread that should execute tasks one by one from a queue, but should never execute more than one task simultaneously. For example, Java Swing's event dispatch thread has such a requirement. It has to process and dispatch UI events one by one from a queue. For such requirements, there is the single thread executor. It can be created by calling the new single thread executor method of the executors class. It guarantees that all the tasks will be executed sequentially only, and no more than one task will be active at any given time. 
Similar to the single thread executor is the single thread scheduled executor that can be created by calling the new single thread scheduled executor method. It creates a single threaded executor that can run scheduled tasks from a queue one after the other after a given delay or it can also execute the tasks periodically from a queue. After knowing about all these executors, one thing worth mentioning here is that all the executor service instances returned by the executors are actually objects of a class called thread pool executor. Thread pool executor implements executor service interface. Different kinds of thread pools are constructed by passing in different configuration settings to the constructor of thread pool executor class. Knowledge of this class is not required for using the executors class or for even using the executors framework at all. You only directly need to work with thread pool executor in rare instances when your application's needs cannot be fulfilled by the executor service instances provided by the executors factory class. So just keep it at the back of your mind that if you need some custom thread pools, you can create them by tweaking the thread pool executor class. The last entity in the list is the future interface. Whenever you submit a callable for execution, the executor service returns you an instance of future interface. You can call the get method on this future instance to get the value returned by your callable task. The call on this get method gets blocked till the task has run to completion and has returned the value. Future also provides the isDone method for checking if the task has run to completion as yet or not. Now, as discussed already, there are many types of pre-tweaked thread pools provided by the JDK out of the box. In the upcoming lessons in this section, we will look at each of these thread pools in action one by one, except the scheduled executors, which we will look at in another section later. We will also see the classes depicted on the previous slide in action in the upcoming lessons. That's all on the topic of important classes and interfaces in Executors Framework. See you in the next lesson now.